Charlie 16, ambulance 4, medic 3, respond priority 1, 100 Grock Mall Avenue for an auto accident. Caller stays subject is trapped inside the vehicle and has severe lacerations. Units responding handle code 3. I really wanted you to see uh, Court Square in these beautiful buildings. Uh, this is Symphony Hall, just gorgeous. They have uh, a lot of fine entertainment here, and uh, I don't remember the name of that building. Uh, uh, Campanile. The Campanile, well, that's right. Campanile. That's the Campanile. Sure. Isn't that gorgeous? And uh, this is uh, City Hall, one of the most beautiful structures uh, you know, in the entire Commonwealth, it's just just gorgeous architecture. And behind those trees are the, is the uh, is the Civic Center, and that's the home of the uh, uh, Springfield Indians, the Calder Cup. Oh, 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 Springfield Police Emergency. Hello, my friend's having a heart attack. Your exact location, please. We're in front of the city hall. <laughs> OK, we'll send someone out. Charlie 2 Alpha, ambulance 12, medic 1. We respond priority 1 to city hall, the front of, for a possible cardiac arrest. Caller state subject is unconscious on the steps. Units responding, handle code 3. <laughs> Okay, we still have still no pulse. Okay, we 
and they're charging at 360 again. Everybody clear, clear. Ah. Pulse. I've got a pulse. Let's get them packaged, let's get out of here. I'm gonna secure the two of them. No sign is Brady and Gordon. Okay, let's, let's go to the base down. state with them, Mike. Tube is secured. Okay. Ready to roll for the board. Okay. Ready? On a three. Head on three. One, two, three. Turn. Come back. Count a three up a little bit. One, two, three. Okay. okay. Go grab the start. Requesting a priority one patch to the Bay State Medical Center. Stand by on Med 1. Springfield CMED calling Bay State ER. This is Springfield ER, go ahead. This is uh, Springfield EMS, paramedic number 2. Cadaver signal 600 for cardiac arrest. Stand by, please. Cadaver signal 600 for cardiac arrest. Bay State ER, MD 8, go ahead. This is paramedic number 2. Uh, currently in route to the facility with a 62 year old male patient. Um, bystanders stay clutched his chest as he was walking down a flight of stairs. Bystanders went on to state that the patient uh, from there slowly deteriorated. Upon arrival of the police department, the officer determined the patient was uh, apneic and pulseless. CPR was initiated by the police. Upon our arrival, the patient was in full cardiac arrest. A quick look showed the patient to be in V-fib. Uh, we shocked the patient three times with no change in rhythm. The patient was shocked at 200, 300, 360 joules. He was then intubated and IV therapy was initiated. Uh, we administered one milligram of epinephrine to CPR continued. Following the medication, we 
to the patient at 360 joules. Uh, patient went into a sinus bradycardia rhythm with a pulse. Heart rate was uh, 40 first degree block. Blood pressure is now 85 palpation. The respiratory rate is being assisted. I'd like to administer one milligram of atropine uh, to bring the patient's heart rate up, followed by a saline bolus of 250 cc. Our EK to your facility is approximately eight minutes. We'll go ahead with the uh, atropine and the saline bolus and um, be prepared to pace the patient if you need to. Receive Metcon. Uh, we're going to administer one milligram of atropine. I'd be pushed followed by a saline bolus. If no change, we'll consider pace. Base stay clear. Thank you, Base State. Thank you, Sprinkle C Med. Sprinkle DMS is clear. professionals that bring the emergency room to the streets, saving lives as time is the ultimate enemy. How's that? Does that look pretty good? Well, it's better than last time. It's 138 over 88. Springfield College, in association with Bay State Medical Center, trains paramedic students in all aspects of emergency medicine. Hospital rotation provides hands-on training, experience in the administration of medication, and the learning of procedures. Dr. Kim Craw is the medical director of the Emergency Medical Services at Springfield College. His role is to ensure the best education possible for the emergency medical technicians. It is the hope that these specialties can pass on an education to them so that it's not only an education that they receive in the classroom but integrated with the hospital and in concert with the experts in the field so that they will be able to professionally perform the same procedures in the same manner that the experts do. Dr. John Santoro is Chief of Emergency Services at Bay State Medical Center where he oversees the daily operations in the emergency department. It used to be more of a load and go type attitude. Now it's, it's an extension of the physician in the emergency department, an extension of his eyes and ears and hands out into the field, into the community. There are a lot of medical conditions where time is absolutely essential. So if we as emergency department physicians can't get to the patient, then we can get medical care delivered to the patient by the paramedic. The paramedics allow us to do even a better job. There are a lot of times where I, as an emergency specialist, have patients coming in that were dying out in the field, dying in their own home of anaphylaxis, of asthma attacks. And by the time they came into the hospital, they were comfortable, talking in full sentences, and actually wondering why they were in the hospital. That's a great source of pride to me. When you see V-fib on a monitor, it's very, it looks just as chaotic on the monitor as it does as, like in the real chest. So if you open somebody up, it's a big bag of worms just sitting right there. It's not contracting, it's just fibrillating. And that's what it looks like on a monitor, and that's what it looks like inside. At and Springfield the, College, when you see students that, acquire the basic knowledge is, of emergency medicine. The four-year curriculum that's focuses the, on classroom instruction, thing. sometimes conducted by doctors from Bay State Medical yeah, Center. So. The PR interval is what? Doing what? The PR yes. interval is getting longer. And, and then the what happens? So it eventually drops the beat. So what is that? It's a winky back moment right. one. All right, exactly. Utilizing an array of teaching methods, the student learn skills and procedures. The paramedic students are then evaluated on the basic medical procedures. Okay, Phil, are you ready for your scenario? Yes, I am. Okay, you've got a 50-year-old gentleman that was out working in his yard. It's summertime. Wife looked out as the patient clutched his chest and collapsed. You're the first crew on scene. I do a quick assessment. You know, we're breathing circulation. Okay, he's apneic and pulseless. Okay, I do a quick look on the monitor. The young men and women who do this job now are true professionals. The They're the monitor. people who go to school to yeah, learn drug dosages. They learn yeah, to interpret EKGs. They learn a lot clear, of medicine in a very limited shots. scope. Their forte is resuscitation. Okay. Okay. Their forte is to be able to work without orders from the doctor now. They are operating what we call standing Stand orders. They are trained enough to be able to interpret the rhythm of the heart, to give a appropriate treatments and medications and to operate essentially independently under certain emergency circumstances. In addition to classroom, we also have an extensive clinical phase and a field internship where the paramedic students actually perform as paramedics under the tutelage of more experienced paramedics called preceptors. We are 
almost the sole provider of EMTs and paramedics in the greater Springfield area, but more importantly, we are training leaders for across the country, and a matter of fact, internationally. We have students from Puerto Rico and from Taiwan who have entered the four-year program here. So we hope to export our knowledge of this uh, new science uh, throughout the country. It's very crucial the first minutes of an incident are paramount to the patient's survival. And so the earlier you can get advanced life support out to the patient, the better the outcome is going to be for um, success. Another part of paramedic training is to participate in exercises with other rescue personnel. This drill was conducted at the fire training center in Indian Orchard.
contact. Can you hear us, ma'am? Can you hear us, ma'am? Yeah, let's get on 100%, please. Okay. Spiking on the bag out of our orange kid, please. What do we got? Lactated running? I want lactated, please. We got LRs here for you. Okay, you guys stay on this side. I also need a 14 or a 16 out of the bag and alcohol prep and a bean and guard. Sure. Best best is 90 over 60. 90 over 60, cool. Got it? Yeah. Cool beans, cool beans. Deep breath again. Man, emergency medical program, the students traveled to New York City to participate in a week of training with the city's emergency medical system, which responds to over 3,000 calls a day. This innovative program offers the students daily life experiences where they can practice their skills and become acclimated to the advanced life support element. Here, the students traveled to Fort Totten for orientation. Welcome to New York City. You're all going to be assigned to one specific unit um, in various parts of the city. Uh, the five boroughs in the city, you will be encompassing four. They're getting first-hand knowledge in not only the medical situations, the uh, cardiac emergencies, but also the trauma situations, where we, we would involve all of our advanced life support skills, including endotracheal intubation, uh, cardiac defibrillation, starting uh, IVs, large bore IVs for uh, quick transfer of uh, body fluids. They'll be uh, utilizing our telemetry system, coordinating the biotelemetry feedback to the various uh, participating hospitals and also our medical control, and communicating their findings, their initial evaluation of the patient uh, assessment, and their actions up to that point uh, requiring additional medical input. So there's a full gamut of ALS skills that they'll be putting to uh, perfect practice every day they work out here. Yeah. 
I don't go to the rear, because I'm trying to get the rest out to the rear. Is there more coming out the rear? In the first year as quick as possible. Paramedics in Springfield supply professional medicine with empathy, the kind of medicine that cannot be found anywhere else. What the uh, paramedics provide is a level of insurance or security that should something bad happen, and no one can say that it's not going to, that they'll be there and they'll be ready to intervene. There are a lot of medical conditions where time is absolutely essential. What we were doing is bringing the emergency department out to the streets of Springfield. And this is an advantage that some cities and towns still don't have in the 90s. And that's part of our mission at Springfield College, is to try to train locally and nationally so that the best medical care can be available to the citizens. The paramedics carry life-saving medicines. They carry with them life-saving skills that only they can perform. <laughs> 